In this lesson, you are going to create a payment page. The purpose of this page is to record and store delivery addresses and orders before sending the user to whichever payment provider you are going to use to handle their payment details. The vast majority of websites use third-party payment providers to process credit card payments. The most popular payment provider is PayPal. PayPal accepts all major credit cards and is relatively easy to integrate into your site using the skills that you've learned in this course. As an alternative to storing your own transactions, many payment providers offer a complete online storefront, meaning that all you have to do is send your users to the correct link to buy your products. To begin this lesson, open the Smart Method Store project from your Sample Files folder. And open pay.aspx from the Pay folder in Design View. You can see that the controls to enter the address have already been created to save time. You could easily create this form yourself. Before sending the user to your payment provider, you will need to record their order details. Add a Click Event Handler to the Button Continue to Payment control. Now add the following code to the new Event Handler. Using store data context data equals new store data context. As usual, you need to create an instance of your link class to connect to the database. Now add the following code inside the using statement to create and populate a new order object. The order object represents a row of data in the order database table. Order new order equals new order. New order dot order address one equals text box order address one dot text. New order dot order address two equals text box order address two dot text. New order dot order town equals text box order town dot text. New order dot order region equals text box order region dot text. New order dot country ID equals convert dot two int thirty two drop down list country dot selected value new order dot order postcode equals text box order postcode dot text. This code creates a new order object and populates its address details. Now set the rest of the properties of the order object with the code new order dot order paid equals false new order dot order sent equals false new order dot username equals page dot user dot identity dot name new order dot order date equals date time dot now this code sets the order paid and order sent flags to false so the order is marked as unpaid and unsent. It also sets the username to the username of the currently logged in user, and sets the order date to the current date and time. In the next lesson, you'll add security to make sure that a user is logged in before they place an order. Now commit the new record to the database with the following code data dot orders dot insert on submit new order data dot submit changes 
As well as storing the address details in your database, you'll need to store the list of products that your user ordered. To store the list of products, you will add the contents of the shopping cart to the order product table in the database. You can do this by using a for each loop. First, add the following code to retrieve the shopping cart from the session object. List int products equals list int session cart. This code retrieved the shopping cart from the session object. Now add the following code on the next line. For each int product ID in products order product new order product equals new order product new order product dot order ID equals new order dot order ID new order product dot product ID equals product ID data dot order products dot insert on submit new order product then after the end of the for each loop data dot submit changes this code loops through the list of products in the shopping cart and adds a record to the order product table for each product they are linked to the order table by the order id notice that you only need to call the submit changes method once after the loop has ended this was covered in lesson 10 8. now that you've recorded the order details you need to send your user to the payment system there are many different payment systems available on the internet all of which operate differently for now just mark the end of the event handler with the following commented line send user to payment system here now close visual studio saving your changes if prompted you've now completed lesson 12 11 create a payment page